In this video, I'm gonna show you how do you get CML or Cisco Modeling Labs installed and running on a Windows 11 computer. I'm gonna show you the whole process, how to download VMware Workstation Player, free software that you can get from VMware. I'll show you how to download the CML software as well as the Cisco iOS images, how to set it up in VMware Workstation Player and bold topologies such as these in CML. I'm gonna show you all the steps from A to Z or A to Z to get this up and running. Okay, let's get started. I've created videos in the past showing you how to set this up, but things are obviously always changing. One of the things to be aware of is that there are two versions of the personal edition of CML. You have the Cisco Modeling Labs Personal and Personal Plus. The big difference between those two is that the personal edition allows for 20 concurrent Cisco simulated nodes, and the Plus allows for 40 simulated nodes. The cost is also different, $199 for the personal edition, $349 for the personal plus edition. So if you're just starting out, get the personal edition. There are a number of advantages to using CML. You get to the Cisco iOS images. So for routers, iOS V, switches, iOS V layer two, you get an ASA virtual image as well. You get other images such as Nexus images. So for that cost, which gives you the product for a year, you get access to a whole bunch of Cisco images. You can build really complex topologies using CML. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is download the CML software. You need to download the software. There are two parts to this. The first part is the OVA, which we're gonna run in VMware. The next part is you need to get the ISO file that contains the various images that you wanna run. Make sure that you download both of those. So I'll put the links below. You'll need to log in to Cisco's website to be able to download these. So log in with your account and download the software. Be aware that the ISO image is eight gig in size. The OVA is one gig in size. So it might take a while to download the software. And that's why I've pre-downloaded it for this video. You smart. Next piece of software that you need is VMware Workstation either Player or Pro. I'm gonna demonstrate using Player because that's free software. You can get that software from the VMware website. I'll put a link below. You simply go to this URL or you can just search in Google for VMware Player Download. So that's the first hit in Google. Click on that link and then click Download Player in this example for Windows. Click on that and then you'll be able to download the software. In my example, I've also pre-downloaded it. So once your software is downloaded, you double click on VMware Player. I'm gonna say yes to allow the app to make changes to my device. Installation starts. It's a very simple installation. We're basically gonna take the defaults for most of these. You need to accept the license agreement. I'm gonna leave VMware at the default path and click next. In my example, I'm not gonna join the VMware Custom Experience program. I'm gonna allow it to create shortcuts. Click next, click install and VMware is now installed. One thing to note is that it will create additional adapters on your computer. So under network and internet, network and sharing center, adapters, you will see additional adapters show up here. At the moment, I've got a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapter, and it's just created an Ethernet 3 adapter. You can see various VMware adapters were created by VMware. That's normal and expected. Once it's installed, click finish, and there you go. Now, what we can do is double click the VMware Workstation Player icon. I'm not gonna use this for commercial reasons, so I'm gonna select the first option and click continue and click finish. VMware Workstation Player is once again free for non-commercial use. Now, before I continue, it's important that you have VTX or AMD V enabled in the BIOS of your computer. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. If you've already got that enabled, then you can jump to this timestamp to continue with the video. Otherwise, I'm gonna show you an example using an Intel computer, how to enable VTX. The way you set this up will depend on the type of computer that you're using. In this example, I've got a Dell XPS. So what I'm gonna do is shut down the computer. I'll turn it on, and in my example, I need to press F12 to go into the BIOS of the computer. So it says preparing one-time boot. Okay, so in the BIOS, of this computer, I've got to go to BIOS setup. And in this case, I need to go to virtualization. And I need to make sure that Intel virtualization technology is enabled or VTX. So in my example, this is already set on, so that's fine. And I can exit out of the BIOS. 
Windows restarts and I can log back in. And now I can start up VMware Workstation Player as an example, or whichever hypervisor software that you're using. Okay, so next step is to go to Player, File, Open, select the OVA that we've downloaded. So CML, so CML 2.4 in this example, OVA, click Open. I'm gonna call the Cisco CML 2.4 and click Import. Okay, CML is being imported. It's as simple as that to, to get CML into a VMware Workstation Player. The next thing you wanna do, and you wanna make sure that you do this, is go to Edit a Virtual Machine Settings. You could change the RAM or memory. You could change the processes allocated. We wanna see Virtualize VTX in this output. You need to be running Intel VTX or AMD V for this to work. An important thing here, however, is you need to go to CD and you need to select the ISO image that has all of the images for the Cisco devices. Now in this version of CML, the downloaded file is a zip file. So you're gonna to wanna to extract that. So I'm gonna say extract all, and you're going to wanna to select the ISO file that's extracted. So I'm gonna select that file. Okay, so files extracted back in VMware Workstation Player. I'm gonna select that ISO file and click open. I also wanna select connect at power on. It's important that you do this because during the installation, if you don't have that ISO image connected, it'll cause problems I've found with a CML. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got that connected. And now that you've done that, you can click play virtual machine or start up the virtual machine. CML is starting up. Okay, and there you go, the welcome screen appears. I'm gonna click into the virtual machine and press enter to continue. I'll press tab to accept the end user license agreement. You'll obviously need to do that yourself. Some information is provided. So we told that two accounts need to be configured. I'm gonna press enter to continue. Some help is given. So just have a read at the documentation if you like, but I'm gonna go through this installation quickly. Press enter to continue. If you want to implement clustering where you have more than one CML, so like two CML servers, and you want to scale with your topologies with two CML servers, you need to have two virtual interfaces. In my example, I only have one, and I'm happy with that. I'm only going to set up one CML server. You need to specify the CML server name, CML controller, that's fine for this example. And then you need to specify a username and password, sysadmin. This is a Linux username, so if you wanna log into the CLI, you need to specify that. It tells me the password isn't great, I'm happy with that. So yes, and then you need to specify the admin account, which is the web interface account. I'm gonna specify a password here, press continue. I'm okay having a basic password because this is just a demo. Oh, this is not the greatest password. CML can use a static IP address or DHCP. DHCP is fine, so I'm gonna specify that. We're given information about the CML server. Press enter to confirm. We then told that images will be copied from the ISO to the VM disk. Takes about 10 minutes. After this is done, you can remove the ISO from CML. That's great in the old days, you used to have to have it connected. So press enter and the installation now continues. So you can see it's copying images from the ISO. We can see as an example, Alpine has been copied. We've got the ASA software being copied. The C8000V software is copied. And I won't bore you watching this. I'll speed up the video at this point. Okay, we told that the system is now configured. You need to point your browser to the IP address shown on the console when this tool closes. So you can press OK or you can just wait for the countdown. Basically, that's how you get CML installed in VMware. Now that that's happened, we can connect to the GUI interface. Okay, I see a problem immediately here. It's telling me that the IP address is 127.0.0.1. That's not gonna work very well. So let me make sure that my networking is configured properly. So virtual machine settings, network adapter, that should be bridged to my Wi-Fi card as an example. My Wi-Fi interface is definitely connected to a Wi-Fi network. So I'll log in as sysadmin and I'll say sudo shutdown now to shut it down. That should have got an IP address automatically from DHCP. Okay, so in command prompt, can I ping 
google.com as an example. Yes, I can. So it looks like the computer has IP connectivity. What I'll do is start up CML again, and hopefully it'll get an IP address. What I'll do here is specify NAT because it's for some reason still not getting an IP address. Okay, so now it's got an IP address, 192.168.32.128. So in my browser, I'll connect to that IP address, 192.168.32.128. We told that it's not private, which is fine, but there you go, I've now connected to CML and I can log in. Now I had to use NAT in that example to get this to work. I could try and troubleshoot the network and see what's going on, but I simply wanted to get it to work at this point to show you how to get the installation done. So I'll troubleshoot the bridging issue later. Could be It could be a firewall on the computer or something that's causing a problem. I'll go to system health, and we're told that there's a problem with the licensing. The system isn't licensed. No simulations can be started before the system has a license. So we need to license the server. To get your license, go to learning network store cisco.com forward slash my account. I'll put a link to that below. In my example, I'm gonna get my license. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it in and I'm gonna click register. We're told that the registration has completed successfully. That's great. So I can go to dashboard and what I'll be able to do now is click add to create a topology. So what I'll do is drag an iOS V route into the topology. I'll drag another one and let's drag a switch. So iOS V layer two, and then I'll connect the first router to the switch and the switch to the second router. I can zoom in and move the devices around. I'll start the router, start the switch, start the second router. And then I'll click on the first router and click console to go to the console. You can see it says booting iOS V on the switch. You can see that this is Cisco iOS V software, V iOS advanced enterprise. Let's go and have a look at the switch. You can see it's also booting and the second router is also booting up. So we told that the host name is not a legal host name. If I click edit config, you can insert the host name here. So you can set up an initial config if you like. But if I go back to the console, you can see it's gonna use this name as the host name. Switch is booting up. Interfaces have come up and you can see it says insert host name here. Once again, that's because I didn't edit the config. But what I could do is type enable conf t host name switch one, interface VLAN one, IP address, let's say 10.1.1.1.252, specify a subnet mask and I'll now shut the interface. Make that a bit bigger so you can see that better. So show IP interface brief. You can see the IP address of the switch and I should be able to ping myself. And there you go. Let's go to the router, interface, gigabit zero, zero, no shut, IP address, 10.1.1.254, let's say, subnet mask of that, host name will be router one, show IP interface brief, interface is up. I should be able to ping the switch if all is good. And there you go, I can. On the second router, host name router two, interface gigabit zero zero, no shut, IP address 10.1.1.253, subnet mask, show IP interface brief, ping 10.1.1.254, which is router one, ping succeeds, and can I ping the switch? Yes, I can. So I could save my configs on the first router on the switch and on router one. Okay, so I could change this lab to let's say lab one to specify my lab. And I could go back to the dashboard and you can see there's the lab. And I could create another lab with other devices. So I could, for instance, use an ASAV or 8000V or Nexus 9000. Lots of options with the software. I'm really glad that the software keeps improving. They keep adding more features to CML. It's a great product these days. Highly recommend that you buy it if you wanna build Cisco labs or you want to work with Cisco devices. It's often a lot cheaper doing this than it is buying a whole bunch of physical equipment and trying to build your own labs, trying to buy an ASA, trying to buy physical routers, physical switches and so forth. It's probably gonna be easier and cheaper to use CML. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.